TAM Airlines Flight 3054. TAM Airlines Flight 3054 was a routine domestic flight in Brazil, traveling from Porto Alegre to Sao Paulo on July 17, 2007. It was an Airbus A320 carrying 181 passengers and six crew members. The flight went smoothly until it reached Sao Paulo's Congonhas Airport. As the plane landed on runway 35L in rainy weather, it failed to slow down properly. Instead, it veered to the left, overran the runway, crossed a busy road, and crashed into a TAM Express warehouse and a gas station. The impact caused a massive fire, killing all 187 people on board and 12 others on the ground. It remains the deadliest aviation accident in Brazil's history. Investigations revealed that the plane's right engine thrust reverser had been deactivated for maintenance before the flight. Flying with one thrust reverser off is allowed, but it requires careful handling during landing. When the aircraft touched down, the left engine's thrust lever was set to idle, but the right engine's thrust lever remained in the climb position. This caused the plane to accelerate instead of decelerate. The runway also lacked proper grooves for water drainage, making it even harder to stop on the wet surface. Experts determined that a combination of pilot error, bad weather, and poor runway conditions led to the crash. German Wings Flight 9525 German Wings Flight 9525 was supposed to be a regular flight on March 24, 2015, heading from Barcelona, Spain to Dusseldorf, Germany. It was an Airbus A320, mostly carrying people traveling for work or vacation. Nothing unusual at the start. It took off smoothly, climbed to cruising altitude, and everything seemed normal. But things took a dark turn mid-flight. The captain stepped out of the cockpit for a moment, leaving the co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, alone at the controls. While the captain was out, Lubitz locked the cockpit door and wouldn't let him back in. Then he started a steady descent on purpose. The plane kept going down until it slammed into the French Alps. There were 150 people on board and, heartbreakingly, no one survived. When investigators dug into what happened, they discovered that Lubitz had a history of serious mental health issues, including depression and suicidal thoughts. He had been declared unfit to fly by a doctor, but he never told the airline. In fact, he even hid medical notes that said he shouldn't be working. The airline didn't know what he was dealing with, and passengers had no clue they were in danger. Air Asia Flight 8501 Air Asia Flight 8501 was supposed to be a quick and easy trip from Surabaya, Indonesia to Singapore on December 28, 2014. The plane was an Airbus A320 with 162 people on board, including passengers and crew. It was a popular flight especially around the holidays, with many travelers heading to Singapore for a vacation or to visit family. The flight took off normally and everything seemed fine at first, but about 40 minutes into the trip, the plane ran into some rough weather. The pilots asked air traffic control if they could climb higher to get above the storm clouds. Unfortunately, they couldn't get permission right away because the airspace above was already crowded. Then, out of nowhere, the plane disappeared from radar. It crashed into the Java Sea and sadly, there were no survivors. When investigations looked into what happened, they found that a part of the plane's rudder system had been acting up, not just during this flight, but in previous flights too. During the flight, when it malfunctioned again, the captain tried to fix it by pulling some circuit breakers to reset the system. That move accidentally shut off the autopilot and auto thrust, leaving the plane in a bad spot. The plane started climbing too steeply, stalled in the air, and then just couldn't recover from that fall. Experts said it was a mix of mechanical issues and the way the crew responded to it. The broken part had a history of problems that hadn't been properly dealt with. Egypt Air Flight 804 Egypt Air Flight 804 was flying from Paris to Cairo on May 19, 2016. It was a routine overnight flight, and the plane, a 12-year-old Airbus A320, had 66 people on board, including 56 passengers, 7 crew members, and 3 security personnel. Most of the passengers were Egyptian and French, and many were simply returning home or heading to visit family. The flight took off normally from Charles de Gaulle Airport and cruised through Greek airspace without any signs of trouble. But while crossing the Mediterranean Sea and just minutes before entering Egyptian airspace, the aircraft suddenly vanished from radar. No distress call was made, and everything seemed fine up until it disappeared. Not long after, wreckage, passenger belongings, and human remains were discovered scattered in the sea, confirming the tragic end of the flight. The main wreckage, including the black boxes, was eventually found at a depth of around 9,800 feet under the sea. What made this crash so mysterious was how it suddenly happened. Data from the aircraft showed that smoke alarms went off in the laboratory and avionics bay just moments before the plane went down. Investigators believe the crash happened quickly and violently. Radar showed the plane swerved left, then right, and began spiraling downward before smashing into the sea. Egyptian officials later said they found traces of explosives on some of the victims, suggesting a bomb. But French investigators pushed back, 
saying evidence pointed more toward a fire in the cockpit, possibly because of a lit cigarette and a leaking oxygen mask, which could have triggered a fast-spreading blaze. To this day, the crash remains controversial, with Egypt and France disagreeing on what truly caused it. Armavia Flight 967 Armavia Flight 967 was supposed to be a routine trip from Yerevan, Armenia to Sochi, Russia. The Airbus A320-200 took off with 105 passengers and 8 crew members heading to Sochi, a popular resort city by the Black Sea. Everything seemed normal at first, but as the plane got closer to Sochi, the weather started getting worse. Heavy rain and low visibility made things tricky. The crew even thought about turning back to Yerevan, but after getting an updated weather report that looked more promising, they decided to go ahead with the landing. As they approached, air traffic control warned them that the clouds were getting lower and told them to abort the landing and try again. That's when things went terribly wrong. While attempting the maneuver manually, the captain got disoriented and accidentally pushed the plane downward. The first officer tried to correct it, but it was too late. The plane kept descending and crashed into the Black Sea. Sadly, all 113 people on board lost their lives. An investigation later found that the crash was caused by controlled flight into terrain, meaning the plane was flown into the water by mistake. The main issue was the captain's disorientation, but other factors played a role too, like the first officer not reacting quickly enough and the crew missing important warnings. Pia Flight 8303 Pia Flight 8303, carrying 91 passengers and 8 crew members, was a standard route from Lahore to Karachi. The Airbus A320-214 was all set to land at Jannah International Airport, but what happened next was a tragedy no one saw coming. As the plane neared Karachi, it was way too high, flying at 9,800 feet instead of the expected 3,000 feet. Realizing this, the pilots tried to descend quickly, at one point dropping at a dangerously fast rate of over 7,000 feet per minute. They lowered the landing gear at 7,200 feet, but for some reason, retracted it again as they got closer to the runway. Then came the critical mistake. The pilots attempted to land without the landing gear, causing the engines to scrape against the runway, creating sparks and severe damage. Without realizing how bad the situation was, they decided to go around for another attempt, but they didn't inform air traffic control about the engine damage. Moments later, both engines failed, and the plane crashed into a residential area called Model Colony just 1.4 kilometers from the runway. Out of 99 people on board, 97 lost their lives, along with one person on the ground. Somehow, two passengers survived. An investigation later found that the pilots had ignored standard procedures and didn't listen to air traffic control. They were reportedly overconfident and shockingly distracted by a conversation about COVID-19 during the most critical moments of the flight. TACA Flight 390 TACA Flight 390 was another routine flight on May 30th, 2008. It took off from San Salvador, El Salvador, heading to Miami, Florida, with stopovers in Tegucigalapa and San Pedro Sula, Honduras. The aircraft, an Airbus A320-233, had 124 passengers and 11 crew members on board. Everything was going smoothly until it reached Tonkatin International Airport in Tegucigalapa. The airport is already known for its tough landings, thanks to the surrounding mountains and a short runway. As the plane came to land, the conditions weren't great. The runway was still wet from earlier rain and there was a tailwind of about 12 miles per hour. The pilots ended up touching down around 1,300 feet beyond where they should have been on the 6,112 foot runway. They hit the brakes, used reverse thrust and deployed the spoilers. Everything they could do to slow down, but it wasn't enough. The plane skidded off the runway at roughly 62 miles per hour, went down a 65 foot embankment, crossed a road and slammed into traffic. The aircraft broke into three pieces, but surprisingly, it didn't catch fire. Tragically, five people lost their lives. Three passengers, the captain, and a person in a car on the road. 65 others were injured. Investigators later found that numerous factors led to the crash. The pilots decided to land despite strong tailwinds. The braking conditions were poor, and they touched down too late. On top of that, the runway lacked proper grooves to drain water, making it even harder to stop. Experts believe that if the pilots had gone for a go-around, the accident could have been avoided. Gulf Air Flight 072 Gulf Air Flight 072 was a flight from Cairo, Egypt to Bahrain on August 23, 2000. The plane, an Airbus A320-212, had 135 passengers and 8 crew members on board. It was a common route connecting two major cities in the Middle East, serving both business and leisure travelers. As the flight approached Bahrain International Airport, things started to go wrong. The plane was coming in too fast, about 360 miles per hour, and was flying too high for a smooth landing. To fix this, the pilots decided to do a 360-degree turn to lose altitude, but they did it at a dangerously low height of just 584 feet above the ground. 
This made the situation even more unstable. After finishing the turn, the aircraft still wasn't lined up properly with the runway. So the captain decided to go around and try again. But during this maneuver, the plane suddenly tilted downward at a steep 15 degree angle. The onboard warning systems blared multiple alarms, but unfortunately, the pilots didn't react in time. The aircraft plunged into the shallow waters of the Persian Gulf, about 1.2 miles from the airport, killing everyone on board. Investigators later found that the crash happened because the pilots didn't follow standard procedures and lost awareness of their situation. Their decision to make a low-altitude turn and their failure to respond quickly to warning alarms were critical mistakes. Air Interflight 148 Air Interflight 148 was a domestic flight from Lyon to Strasbourg, France, on January 20, 1992. The aircraft, an Airbus A321-11, was carrying 90 passengers and 6 crew members. It was supposed to be a straightforward trip connecting two cities. As the plane approached Strasbourg Airport, the pilots were following a specific landing procedure called VOR slash DME approach. This required careful navigation because of the nearby Vosges Mountains. Unfortunately, something went wrong. At about 2,620 feet above sea level, the aircraft crashed into Mont Saint-Odile, a mountain located around 10 and a half nautical miles from the airport. Tragically, 87 people lost their lives while nine others survived with injuries. Investigators later discovered that the crash happened because of a simple but deadly mistake in the autopilot settings. The pilots accidentally set the autopilot to vertical speed mode instead of flight path angle mode. They entered 33 thinking they were setting a safe 3.3 degree descent angle, but in the wrong mode, the autopilot understood this as 3,300 feet per minute, causing the plane to descend way too fast. Making things worse, the aircraft didn't have a ground proximity warning system, which could have warned the crew about the dangerous descent. The airline had opted not to install GPWS to avoid frequent alerts during low-altitude flights. After the crash, several safety improvements were made. Airbus redesigned the autopilot interface to make it clear whether the plane was in VS or FPA mode, displaying vertical speeds as four-digit numbers to prevent similar confusion. GPWS also became a standard feature in aircraft to help prevent future accidents.